I'm Don Baxter. I'm the chief executive officer of Salon Graphite. And we are a graphite mine to battery uh, company. Uh, mines in Sri Lanka, Vein Graphite, pretty unique uh, situation there. And we just recently announced some of the first round of battery tests to show what we can do and how good the uh, Sri Lankan Vein Graphite is in a battery. Good man, Don. Lovely to see you. Uh, I haven't seen you since July. I uh, just wanted a real catch. I've seen some of the, the press releases coming out. There seems to be a lot of uh, admin going on. Also, good news, I think, for you is you've actually been in country. So what did you see? Has it changed your mind? Oh, uh, you know, absolutely. I, I was very impressed with Sri Lanka. I was the first time, actually first time on a plane in two years. So, you know, the typical travel COVID uh, nose jabs for uh, to get there and back was pretty horrendous. But um, I was quite pleased with Sri Lanka and I was extremely pleased with what I saw when I arrived at, you know, K1 mine and uh, M1 uh, operations as well. Um, technical team is excellent. Uh, the one thing I did learn uh, is that the education system in Sri Lanka is, is quite good. Um, so my geologists, my engineers there, um, or I should say our, um, all have advanced degrees, uh, and most of them are from abroad. So from uh, Europe and or Australia. So um, uh, looking at K1 mine, which is our more advanced operations, uh, we're in there sinking the shaft deeper. Uh, the things that I want to do in order to uh, increase our production, get a little more mechanized, uh, they're all in agreement of how we can do this. So I think we'll have a pretty good showpiece with, with K1 um, as we get down into the bigger vein, vein structures. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled with that. Um, we had some administrative stuff to deal with to get our financials done, but that was more of a COVID situation in Sri Lanka and banks being half staff, that kind of stuff. So um, we accomplished a lot while I was there. And uh, the other main thing too is um, um, our PhD geologist consultant is right now presently updating our, re our resource. He's gonna take the historic resources that we have that are not 43101 compliant and he's looking to validate those. Uh, the only slow pace there is getting him uh, uh, a charter membership at the, at the London Geological Society. He's a fellow, but in order to sign off on a 43101, he has to be a charter member. So that's just a slow process that we've been undertaking. So hopefully he has his interview by November. Uh, if not, we may have someone else sign off on his work, but uh, that's another exciting thing. We can show the markets that we, you know, we have a lot of this. It's no doubt it's there. It's just a question of having it in the format that everyone's used to seeing. Okay, so you met, you met some of the team. You shouldn't be surprised that the smart bunch. I had a had yep. a Sri Lankan accountant, super smart guy. There we go. Okay. Um, but tell us tell us about that. You, you you you've gone there. You've seen it face to face. Yep. You were quite aggressive with me last time out in terms of what you thought the timings could be. Right? Yep. You were, had ambition. Have you got a kind of dose of realism now? Is it going to be happening at the same pace that you thought? I think so. Um, maybe not quite the same It's maybe I just say it is a little more daunting to see it firsthand and to see it is small scale mining. There's no doubt of that. Vein mining is always small scale. But um, my views, my thoughts of doing, you know, more multi-level uh, at each mine, uh, these small uh, Brock uh, machines that can do multi different tasks. Uh, they all think I'm they don't think I'm crazy in, in what we can do this. So we don't have to do things the way they were always done in Sri Lanka. You know, get to a level cross cut, follow a vein. You know, go to the next one, go to the next one. Um, they agree that we can do multi, multi, um, uh, multi levels and drive at it as well to get into there. Right. And you, but you also talked to me last time about 10 mines, right? We had that conversation. Yes. Yep. So you had real ambition about not just can you do multi level, but the number of mines that you get at. Do you, again, so sort of seeing the reaction in the marketplace, your shares are moving sideways. It's that kind of market at the moment. You're gonna, yeah. You'd need to go and raise some capital to do all of the above. So again, have you reassessed your time, the timing for your plans? Uh, I say no. I think, I think it may be even more, uh, I'd say more aggressive, but um, we also had conversations with LOLC as on a joint venture where we may jointly de uh, develop more mines. So when I said 10 mines, that could be between ours and theirs. Uh, which we would operate, there could be 20. Um, I sat with the, the, the chairman of the Bureau of Mines and I talked about, you know, 20 or more mines. And he said, why not 400? <laughs> I said, well, not from us, but that's, but yeah, at one point there were 3000 graphite mines running in Sri Lanka. So to talk about multiple mines is not out of the realm of possibility. And, and what I want to do is, you know, restore some of that you know, glory to Sri Lanka, what they had in, in uh, you know, post Second World War or pre Second World War. Um, so it's not outlandish. And the, 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 
the bureaucrats or the, the chairman very keen on looking to help, help to accelerate permitting processes, which is a key thing to, to achieve what I want to do. So let, let, we better define what a mine is then, because if you're chasing veins and they're, yeah. they're, it's kind of small scale mining, and even if you do you know multi-level type activity, what, what, what do you, how do you describe a mine in that context? Uh, I mean, there's, it's, it's typical. I mean, I was down in, in our K1 mine, which is a past producing mine, uh, some of the, some of it was developed in the forties. Uh, I was walking around these underground drifts that were, and, and I could see the other old methods of cut and fill that they used, uh, cleaning out the, uh, the veins, the upper level veins. So it's, it's very typical. The, the biggest thing in timing from, from, uh, as you mentioned earlier, uh, we're not now sinking the, uh, the shaft deeper, uh, the K1 shaft, another 25 meters. Uh, my engineers tell me it'll be three to four months. Uh, and then we're down into some meaningful production. So I said, okay, let's let's focus on that. Let's get the shaft deeper so we can now start, you know, answering these questions about production levels and getting some decent production. So it's it's typical as a shaft, as a hoist. Uh, we will drive an adit. Most of the terrain is amenable to adits. So I think we can look to increase um, production by by level access versus shaft access. Um, so from that standpoint, I'm 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 pretty uh, excited that we can actually get things. To a reasonable level, right? I, 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 I'm starting to, to dwell on this, but it's just you, yeah. you, the mindset for mining graphite versus conventional mining is, is very different. Yeah. Right? We're talking yeah. low, 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 low capex, low personnel. Uh, I get the high grade component for you, but yeah. I, I guess can you help us understand how you join up all these moving parts, all these different mines? The multi level thing, I guess we can get coming up the same at it. But yeah, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So it's 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 still small scale mining on a, on a volume, you know, multiple multiple mines running to get to the numbers we need to get to. So it is still small scale. That's not going to change. Uh, no, no different from vein mining and gold. Uh, the thing is, we're just taking out the high grade uh, graphite. And this particular, in, in, if you know the veins are wide enough, the, the, this Brock machine has a as a road header type attachment, which can can eat through the graphite very quickly versus the old ways of doing it. So you get multiple mines, you know, you know, 10, mi 10 times 5,000, if you can get that high. My, my goal is to squeeze as much out of each mine as possible and multiply it by 10 or even more. Just a quick example too, with what, I, what I did find was, was a nice uh, um, a pleasure or a nice uh, surprise was when I was standing at M1 mine uh, where we just have to sink the shaft another 25 feet to get down into the main system. Um, there looks to be, from my geologist telling me, M1, A, B, and C, right in the same area. So again, we're in a system that runs right through the center of the island there. Um, it's on the same vein as the Kahataga mine, which is the government mine. They're down, th they're down 2,000 feet. Um, now, I mind you, that's, that's a different, I'm not looking to get there, but what I'm saying is that shows how deep these systems are. So if we're down 200 feet, you know, 300 feet, the cost is still reasonable, especially if we have added access. Um, but again, having multiple um, units, uh, these mechanical units, I've got these Brock machines, uh, which can be fairly small scale. Um, it was actually, ironically, just an article in the Canadian Mining Journal about them uh, looking into some, some vein mining, deep vein mining to increase production levels. So uh, I'm not too far off of my thoughts there to, to mechanize more so to help, you know, squeeze as much production out as I can. Right. At some point down the line, I mean, are we talking about getting in, doing any production in 2022? If so, what yes. sort of scale? Oh, absolutely. You yes. are. Yeah. Right. Yes. But, but again, yes. How, can you, maybe again, but early, can you give us any guidance as to what your expectations are for next year? Because chasing veins is, is, is complex, right? Whatever you're mining, right? Yeah. But we're, one thing we're doing is increasing our, 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 um, say our engineering, our geology, my, mine modeling, um, long term planning, short term planning. Uh, that kind of things, it gives us that roadmap to get to exactly where we need to be. With the 3D modeling we're doing, we'll do some more definition drilling. Uh, that's all part of my conversations with my technical team. Let's, we need a better, as you say, a roadmap to get to where we need to be so we can plan, you know, six months down the road, a year down the road. But uh, within 2022, we will have, a K1 will be fully operational and M1 as well. So two mines. Third mine, there's still other mines where there's drilling going on. Um, and keep in mind, a lot of these, a lot of these areas are, are, are rehabilitation versus, you know, sinking a new shaft or so. There's a lot of areas where we have old mines. So it's a matter of getting into these mines, which allows you to develop quicker. 
like you're either deepening a shaft, you're widening a shaft, you're looking at some other development work. So building on that. How are you paying for that? Uh, we have to raise some money. There's no no question about that. Probably in the near term, we'll look to raise, you know, what what the markets will will bear. Um, so um, it's it's at this stage, take two million of mine. Um, we'll look to be hopefully also at the same time selling graphite next year. So I raise, you know, I'd say I, I want to do at least five. Um, we'll see what comes of that. But we'll, um, as I say, we already have two in production. Uh, and the development, uh, the M1 uh, mine may, you know, yield three within the same area, which would be a cheaper level, a cheap, cheaper way of doing it. Right. Okay. You, you said at the beginning, you used the phrase, it's yeah. mine to battery, right? But in the short term, it's mine yes. to market. Well, yes and no. So the other thing, too, is that we also, the biggest thing, one of the reasons, again, is doing the 43101 is also, Showing the showing the OEMs what we have as far as and that's some of the conversations they're seeing. You know, we put out some incredible results for our initial battery tests. You know, but well above the theoretical limit of flake. Uh, the vein graphite is more crystalline, so it has better capacities. You know, we're at 382 milliamp hours per gram on our initial baseline work. Uh, the theoretical limit of, of flake is 372. You'll get the best synthetic is at 360. Uh, so, you know, we've got a very good product, but if, if you don't have enough volume, it doesn't matter. So one, one OEM or one cell manufacturer, we were talking about what they would need. And I said, well, it's not going to all come from us. It can't. You, they need well beyond any one, what any one company can produce right now. So, you know, if we can get to 50,000 tons and ultimately to 100,000 tons, um, it's not going to happen in, you know, two years. It's going to happen over, over a five-year period, let's say. Um, but we'll also look to quicken up as we get the interest of the OEMs. Now we're in a position we can talk a little more um, uh, with meaningful conversations with the OEMs, not just talk about the potential of vein uh, in a battery. We're showing them what it is. So that will help us to look to, you know, you just imagine if we, you know, can announce some more cooperation with one of the OEMs, that'll allow us to raise the money a whole lot, a lot easier. Um, and we're doing some work. I'm, I'm heading to the UK next week. We're looking at to increase our, our facilities there, which allow us to make you know more battery materials and provide more samples. Uh, we do have some samples out there already, so they're already in the you know the time frame is happening where the OEMs are now really realizing that they have to come upstream and, and take a closer look at supply and not just rely on the, the cell manufacturers, the anode companies to give them what they need. They, they, they are, right? So this is a tough yeah. bit for you. You're in that kind of funny, funny spot at the moment, right? Where an OEM is saying, hey, the grade's there. Uh, yeah. That's good. Can't, you haven't demonstrated scale yet. In fact, you haven't demonstrated yeah. that you'll be around to do anything about it yet. But at the point you do, we could come in as an industry a strategic partner or yes. you may have to find an industry partner as some sort of intermediary. I, I don't know what, what your plans are, but can you give us a sense of, you know, the, 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 the deliverables that you think you need to deliver for an OEM to actually say, here's some money? Cause you talked about, Hey, what the market will bear. And right now yeah. without contracts, et cetera, it's got to be there. They're, they've got to believe in the thesis and your ability to deliver. So that's exactly where you're I think the first. The first step is see our technical data sheets, um, which we'll we'll be able to provide now. We couldn't up until, you know, we, we until we came out with our first uh, round of, of test work from from Warwick. Um, so now we're increasing that uh, conversation. Let's say um, also with the updated resource we're doing, that's going to show what's more what's in the ground. And again, I don't think once we do that, it's going to be a, our even our resource models are going to be an ongoing uh, update because these these veins run for kilometers. They'll go to depth and they run for kilometers. So it's always going to be a work in progress. If we get to say we've got, you know, say 50,000 tons of K1, I mean, that's 50,000 tons gating, grading 95 carbon. It's not 50,000, you know, at 0.23 copper. Um, it's, it's, it's solid, basically graphite. Um, we're now showing that that material is there. We're in a region where it's been mined for 170 years. Um, so, you know, we, those are the pieces of the puzzle that come into play, um, where the money comes from, you know, it may just take a, a nod from an OEM to say, you know, we're inter interested, here's a, here's a potential, uh, contract or not necessarily an offtake. Um, but, um, it, it, it's going to be a process and, and we're just, I'm just putting all the, the legs underneath it to get there. Um, we were, we weren't there, you know, last June, let's say uh, when we spoke or July, when we last spoke, uh, now we're getting closer to where we've got that, you know, the interest is there. 
the battery is good. Um, and we haven't even shown our silicon enhanced material yet. Um, that's going to get even more attention. But again, it comes down to, again, on the, on the mining side, we have to show, there's no doubt the material is there. It's just about to show that our, and I think that's the biggest thing the market wants to see is our ability to produce this at, at, at larger scale, um, you know, hit the you know, 20, 30, 50,000 tons. I'm conf confident we can do that. But I do realize the market needs to see some more than just my my, my voice. So I, I got a picture of K1 as our show home, show house in, in, a, in, a, in a subdivision where we've got multiple lots developing. Um, and K1, uh, which is further advanced, it's deeper, will be down 220 feet. Um, that will be the, you know, here's here's what we can do and multiply that by 10 or, or more is what I, how I vision. I, I mean, I can't do that within, a, well, I can't prove to the market in the next two months that we can do that, but you know, within within four months, we'll be deep into the vein, and uh, we'll be starting to apply some of these you know mechanical methods that I envision and my team agrees with. Okay, so you met, you mentioned um, coming to the UK. Uh, obviously, we talked previously about work, working with a couple of guys out of Cambridge, and obviously Warwick University, and you know potentially going to the Innovation Centre there. Um, you incorporated a company here in the UK. You haven't listed here though. Um, wh why did you why did you do that? Well, I think it gives us access to a lot of funding as well. So the UK with Brexit, I mean, the UK is very keen to establish, you know, the various uh, UKIP and, and, and Faraday, and there's multiple um, uh, uh, um, groups out there looking to, you know, provide money to establish this industry in the, in the UK. A lot of attention has been paid to the EU. You see a lot of our, um, I don't like to say competitors, but the, the other companies in the, in the flake business are, are focusing their efforts in, in, uh, in Europe. Um, whereas I think it's to our advantage to, to focus ourselves into, into the UK. Um, and also we have our, our two PhD uh, chemists and physicists uh, sitting in, in Cambridge. So it's, it's having, being domicile in the UK makes a lot of sense to us. Um, they're very well connected and, you know, companies like British Volt, I'm sure, are keen to have local supply, uh, local processing capabilities. And that seems to be the trend everywhere. We want to have the, not necessarily the, the deposit within, our, within the borders, but they want to have the processing capability. The United States wants it. Um, that's one of the things that President Biden said, you know, it's, it's not necessarily about having all the material in the ground. It's about having the ability to process it. And we're behind, they're behind the eight ball. The UK is the same, you know, looking at what they want to have in the future. It makes sense to have, have that material um, there. And, you know, Sri Lanka is part of the Commonwealth um, as well. So having a, being a partner in that, providing materials to, uh, to the UK, I think it makes, does make a lot of sense for us. Okay. So it kind of feels like there's, there's still a lot, everything is advancing. Yes, a lot of, lot, and you've been in country now, which is which is good news. And you kind of get the, you get a sense of how the the lay the lay of the land, literally, I guess. Yep. And you know how quickly you can kind of piece that together. We'll hear more from you as you know more. Yes. Get it. Yeah. Um, on the technical side, um, coming to you, obviously coming to the UK, I think is a big deal. So, what precisely will you, with the guys, be doing at Warwick University in, in terms of you know what what precisely are they trying to prove to the OEMs? Because okay. that, that, that's the kind of technical, there's a technical component there, but what, what are they asking you to do or show them? Okay. Well, well first of all, we're setting up, um, we, we actually have at least one of the things I'm just looking over, I just got it yesterday is our lease agreement. We're setting up our own facilities within the Warwick Innovation Center in Coventry. Um, so we want to be able to do, one of the issues is getting all these materials made, done, uh, you know, getting things purified, spherinized, uh, all the work we need. It's been all, we're relying on others. Um, I don't want to do that. I want to do it ourselves. Um, just because we don't have to wait for two months to get something spherinized in Germany or wherever we get it done. So I want to establish that aspect of it and then build from there as far as as we increase our technical capabilities or our scaling capabilities to get bigger and bigger um, to a production level facility. Uh, having the So being at Warwick, they have an excellent reputation in, as far as you know, be able to, to make the batteries. We're starting with the coin cells. We're going to full cells. We'll go to our silicon enhanced. Um, and I think the wave of the future is silicon enhanced. So um, I'm excited to see that. If, if our baseline uh, graphite uh, anode is, is, is 382 milliamp hours per gram, uh, I mean, I was excited with Flake when we got three, 367. Uh, but um, in my past, uh, past do, uh, dealings with, with other companies, but to be at 382 with our baseline, 
um, out, out of the gate. I, I'm, I'm, I don't need a hazard to guess. I mean, I knew it was going to be good. I didn't know it would be that good, but we'll be, uh, I think it'll be a very surprising um, number to see our silicon enhanced. Uh, so we'll just keep advancing on that. People want to see full cells, pouch cells as we advance to that level. So we'll just keep doing our work there. It's a well-established independent group doing it with Warwick, um, but we'll have more ability to make our own materials, you know, being on the, on the same campus as well too. Um, to, to have the materials ready to provide them for um, making more batteries for us. Okay, so, this, so there's, lo there's lots of um, questions being sent in and, and in varying degrees of okay. understanding, but like sure. that, okay? So people asking questions about building single process plants for processing graphite from each mine. I think we've established they're no, small, no. so that would not make economic yeah. sense. But yeah. There's a conversation that you've got to have with OEMs, depending on where that goes, isn't there? Yeah. About you know what I just thought when you just said that? Sorry, something just clicked. Yeah. We don't have a processing facility at each mine. Yeah, I know. Well, that's the difference between vein as well. This all comes to a central point. Correct. Yeah. Whether we have a central crushing and grinding, which gets it ready for the next furnace. So we don't go primary processing at all. We come to a central point uh, where then we'll ship it to... Um, uh, We'll do some secondary in 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 uh, Sri Lanka, which will be will be crushing and grinding uh, to get it ready to go into a furnace. So we're going right into secondary processing, which is battery material. So it's mine to battery. So we don't have ten individual processing plants and tailing systems, all that kind of stuff. None of that. Absolutely. So that's maybe the difference. It was worth well, clearing too. up because yeah. there's a few questions that similar to that. Okay, so it's worth clearing up. Um, sure. But let's move, move forward to where, where I'm kind of intrigued, with, which is with the conversations with the OEMs, you, you've, you've, even, you've made reference to it, right? So you're, you're probably not going to be a, a, of a scale that's just going to be able to deliver to one gigafactory. You know, it's going to, yeah. they're going to require other uh, graphite suppliers too as well. Is there a point where you, the OEM says, well, I'll tell you what, it's going to be better for us if we get one secondary uh, uh, processing uh, facility. They'll just handle everything, um, and there's a there's they'll give you a slight premium on yours, but you save you the capex. You're you're done. You don't need to take it and, and prove it the whole way up because the OEM's got a whole bunch of other problems it's it's trying to deal with. Uh, if, if I get what you're saying, I mean, my, our vision is to make that material that they're going to take. If we take the the anode uh, material, the spherical graphite, is that what you're saying? Spherical oh, well, that's graphite. what I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying yeah. you want to do that. But yes, you, 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 yes. you're going to have to do, you're going to have to look at the economics and say, well, I'll tell you what, if the OEM will pay us a premium, and we don't have to lay out the capex, I like dilute the heck out of our company to 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 do that, and yep. where they could possibly theoretically could take 100 percent of what we produce, why bother? Because uh, I don't think they, that's not what they're doing. The, the the anode manufacturers for their line don't make this material; they buy it from somewhere else. So we will provide the material, maybe ultimately the paste to the anode manufacturer or the cell, whatever it's combined in. in. So no, the money, the margin is there and I, they don't go that far down. So yeah, exactly. So that's where we're at. Yeah, so we, we'll keep going. We wanna make the, all the money ourselves. It doesn't make sense to sell graphite. I've never been about selling graphite. Uh, it's always been about the, the secondary process material. Right, um, and why, the, why the, won't they come down? Why won't they come down and take some of that margin? I think it's. A, I think it has a lot to do with you know similar companies. It's not their business. Like same as mining is not their business. They make cars or they make batteries, whatever it is they're making. They're not making these input materials. So it's it's getting too far up the chain or down whatever which way you want to go uh, for them to get in there. So there's no expertise there. We've got the expertise. Even with Salon Graphite, right now we're a small company. You know, small market cap company. But you know, I've got a decade of experience doing this. You know, our, our two PhDs in the UK, uh, Siva and Malika Baum. Um, have it, tons of experience doing this. So we're, there's no learning curve for us to do this. So we talk about scaling up or whatever. We know how to do it. There's no, there's no need to, to, um, for us to um, uh, learn anything. To, you know, but the, the OEMs allow us to learn everything. If, if I've been on a conversation when I have with a North American supplier, um, you know, or North American OEM, car manufacturer, they have no clue how to you know, deal with mining graphite or they go that far down the chain. They're, they're so far out of their own expertise area, just not their comfort level is gone. So um, we're looking to provide that comfort level with our, our level of expertise to close that gap and, and, and provide them, provide their suppliers with a secure supply. So it's not just a matter, I mean, they're, they're looking to their suppliers and then they're looking to enhance their supplier's ability to get this material. So we're looking to help there and have a meaningful 
our contribution there and give them the assurances that we can make this stuff. We know how to do it. Great. Okay. And you've just got to get yourself financially in a position yes. to be able to, yeah. to, to do that. So there's some baby intermediary steps. Yes. And some revenues to come in to allow you to get to that point, right? And so what's the, well, how, how long is that going to take then? Well, it's the thing is the whole, the whole, you know, junior mining space is that's, that's the story. You know, you have to raise money to get the next step, but you know, we're hoping to, as we do things, our share price is going to appreciate. So when we are raising money, we're not raising it at 15 cents or we're not, you know, we're ultimately as we, as we advance, you know, our numbers tell us what this share price can be uh, with these numbers. And it's, it's pretty, pretty intriguing. Um, so, you know, it's going to get to the point too, where we have enough ahead of us where it doesn't necessarily all have to be equity financing. So if you got an OEM and you got debt financing options, so it's not all dilutive in everything we do. So that's a little ways down the road, of course, but, you know, we're looking at establishing, you know, this is not just an expiration play where we're trying to sell a asset or something. We're, we're looking to have a meaningful productive company here, not just, uh, you know, it, it starts off as a junior miner, um, but it's not, this is not about mining. This is about batteries and it's about the ability to make those, you know, the high demand. When we spoke, the two, I had a, a chart from Benchmark that said we needed, the world needs 3 million tons of, of anode graphite by 2030. The new, the new chart's 4 million tons. So, you know, we need lots of this to happen. So, you know, you've got other companies out there looking to do this. Um, and and we're, we're in a situation where we, you know, we're just advancing. It take, everything takes time. You know, one of the things I did when I first, uh, you know, initiated, even before I took over as CEO in, in June, um, we were, you know, calling in some of my areas where I've, labs I've worked with before to expedite making the materials. And it still takes, you know, the, the first coin cells, it takes two and a half months to make a coin cell and run them. So everything takes time to where you can actually get it. So the, my first priority was getting this battery data, knowing when it would come. Uh, I had to get it underway as soon as possible. So that, again, you know, we're having conversations with the OEMs, which is unheard of, too. That in itself, if we're, if we're even two years ago, when I, you know, three years ago, you know, dealing with other uh, graphite companies, um, there's no way you'd have a conversation with a General Motors or a Volkswagen or anything. No, but the, but the, uh, the world has changed. And that's why I was asking Absolutely. you about how far up yeah. do you go, how far down do they come? Because yeah. to secure the commodity, you gave a great example there, going from 3 million to 4 million tonnes. The, the date didn't change, the amount changed, right? It's the same for nickel, it's the same for copper, it's the same for tin. It, these charts, there's diverging supply and demand uh, across the board, right? So companies are having to... Think about how to one how do they because I've spoken to battery manu, uh, manufacturers, I've spoken to OEMs. They are looking for supply you know, five, ten, fifteen year uh, uh, terms, and they're looking for it now, and they're trying to secure it now, and they're starting to think differently. And that's why I wondered, like, do you need to start thinking differently? Do you need to think about getting some strategic partners in now to get get you moving quicker. It may be dilutive now, but the size of the price could be bigger. You capture more of the, of the market earlier. Do you know, share the technology, work with someone? Well, it depends on who is out there. There's not a lot of people who know how to do this. So no, that, that's fine, that. but they're buying it from you. Yeah. You're the guy they're buying it from. Yeah, well, that's the thing. So that, this it's all part of the process. Obviously, yeah, we're looking for that strategic partnership, um, but we're getting our data or our house in order to point where that that we can have some you know uh, conversations from from a little more strength here's our material here's what it does and we are actually looking to make you know when i say 10 mines in in, in sri lanka maybe it's maybe it's it's 30. i don't know if we have that demand we can make as many as we want we have enough ground and we have enough graphite in the ground ultimately um to to do that so once we get that confidence of the oem um and that potential you know they need to secure that um we can we can our plans can get a whole lot more aggressive you know, yeah, they, 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 aggressive, yeah 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 I, I, I get that an oem might not want to come so come, come come down a bit but there's there's going to be intermediaries like the battery manufacturers who do there's, there's a couple of south koreans who are getting into nickel companies because that makes yeah. sense for them we've got some aussie companies who are partnering with uh companies with bigger balance sheets to make them borrowing the money cheaper to you know so they don't have to outlay massive capex yeah. like the shareholders so there's lots oh, of different yeah. avenues opening up as the world world changes and quite frankly it's quite a scary <laughs> looking set of numbers for most commodities so do you, you can't think yeah. the way that people used to think you've got to think put myself in the best position oh. to give myself as much optionality as possible that, that's Absolutely. i guess that's a conversation i, think, I want to have with yeah you, right no also very quickly though i think as you mentioned nickel 
it's easier to do that right now in nickel than it is in in graphite or even lithium because it's it's a no, copper and nickel you know it's it's much easier to do it there than it is in graphite okay cobalt uh, cobalt, lithium. cobalt yes, yeah, I mean, bunch of guys yeah but, yeah, yeah, but cobalt is 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 again. It's usually associated with nickel. Um, it's never. It's rarely. It's on its own. So you have it combined with some other polymetallic uh, deposit, mainly nickel, uh, which we need. You know, I think we need at least a million more tons of, of primary nickel coming. So again, graphite's always been the one outlier that people don't understand, or they think we have enough graphite, or and in, in a way we do have enough graphite. We don't have, but it's not processed. So uh, there's never been a big player come in the graphite space yet. That may change. Um, you are getting some more investment in. Um, there's a couple of funds that have been created. Uh, you're seeing, I think, you know, Nouveau Monde has a bigger partner. I think uh, Next Source um, have a bigger partner. Um, Sierra had somebody to get all that money they got at some point. But um, so I think, you know, it's it's coming, but it's 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 volume. I think with the data we have, and as we get more and more out, that's going to increase our ability to do just that. To help us do that, and and, and you say if the money comes in doesn't have to be dilutive. If we do have a, a partner, it's an OEM or whomever. The amount of money we need is minuscule compared to you know some of the big flake mines. So, I think that's an evolution that we're going to see. But we're getting to the point where we have that strength in order to say you know here's here's our, our resource update and here's our really good battery data coming out. So you guys may want more of this, and if you want you know if you want more than we're saying we can do right now, we can you know, there's always room. It's all, you know, money talks. We can do it. Fantastic. Okay. Well, look, I'm not going to kind of dive in uh, with all the other questions around plants, spherical or otherwise that people are asking about. It's too early. you got some data to get and, and, and kind of work out how you move this thing forward. But you are definitely moving this thing forward for sure. Um, so, like, great catch up. Um, maybe come back on before Christmas once you've sort of been to the UK and maybe, you know, th had some of these conversations that you want to have. And, you know, if you can share that with us, it would be much appreciated. Yeah, and I might, I probably, I'm thinking November-ish. I told them I'd be back in November to Sri Lanka. So I probably, I'll be, I'll have a second trip under my belt. We'll see. They, they just opened the country. When I left, the day I left, 10 p.m., they shut the uh, country down. They just opened up on October 1st. So, you know, it takes a while to get things back moving, but I'll probably have to go back in that range and probably November-ish. So we'll have more to talk about for sure. I'll look forward to it. Beautiful, Don. Appreciate time today. Okay. Speak soon. Okay. okay. Thanks, Matt. Take care.